here in my garage. Just bought this new Lamborghini here. But you know what I like more than Lamborghinis? Knowledge, dude. <laughs> and Webinar Wednesday. Guys, welcome to a segment of the show where we get scammed so you don't have to. In the past, when talking about gurus, I've talked about their marketing. I've done that stuff. I've traditionally strayed away from going into their course partly because I don't want to spend $2,000. Also partly because it's hard to show that because it's behind a paywall. But I decided I would do it anyways. And we're going to have to find a way to just summarize this for you and try to get the idea to you without actually showing the content. And our first guru is the grandpappy of all gurus, the guy who had the brilliant idea to pretend he knows something on YouTube, get a bunch of poor, broke, desperate people to pay him a lot of money, and then try to leverage that into an actual legitimate business. I think Ty Lopez is now trying to like buy real businesses. We'll see how that goes. But he got his real start with this whole internet marketer thing. I am like this genius guru who knows the secret of health, wealth, and happiness. You guys all know the ad. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. But today we're gonna be dissecting what happens behind the course, behind the paywall. So, bring down the screen. Always feels like that's gonna hit me. Okay guys, 67 steps to success. This is uh, what he kicked it off with, I believe. You guys are gonna have to tell me if I'm wrong there. But we're gonna be going through a few things, okay, when reviewing this. We're gonna talk about the price. We're gonna talk about what I like, what I don't like. Should you buy this course, the full review, all that stuff. Now, to start with the price, uh, 67 bucks is what I found it for with a $67 renewal if you don't can cancel. I think that's probably pretty mid-range to low range. I think that's like sort of more of a tripwire product. We're trying to get you in the Ty Lopez funnel system. And indeed, a lot during the course, you're hearing him talk about the upsells. If you're part of this closing group, if you're part of this mastermind, you should buy, you know, this upsell. And he always says, oh, I don't actually want the money. No, 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 I don't want the money, guys. I do it for you, so you pay attention. <laughs> you're not gonna pay attention unless, unless you open up that wallet, baby. So that's the price. Now onto the course itself. The first thing you should know about this course by Mr. Uh, Pez is that it's very, very, very long. It's 50 hours long, which if you're looking for value, might seem like a good thing. But unfortunately, 50 hours does not mean 50 hours of good content. It means 50 hours of Ty Lopez basically bloviating about little anecdotes in his life. I mean, nothing of this felt prepared. It felt like he just had three points and his goal was to hit like a 30 minute marker or like an hour long marker. The amount of just kind of like, um, uh, well, where was I going with this is ridiculous. Luckily, I, you know, I was going to feel bad and watch the full 50 hours, but Ty Lopez made me feel better. And this might be the only takeaway that I got from his course was during the speed reading portion. Now we all know Ty Lopez, he's the king of reading, right? One book a day. Well, actually it turns out he doesn't read one book a day. He does something he likes to call speed skims <laughs> a book a day which might mean reading it for five minutes, might mean reading it for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, but basically anything but read it <laughs> all the way through. Uh, and this is his rationale behind it. We want to get away from stories. Stories are what how authors fill up the pages of a book. So, you know. Yeah, that's uh, exactly what Ty Lopez did in this course. They're just trying to sell their book. They don't want to sell. Most authors could write a 10 page book with everything they know, the cliff notes, but they don't want to do that because they can't charge you 20 bucks for it. Yeah, the irony here is palpable. And that's when I realized I'm not going to sit through all of this uh, Ty Lopez justifying a $67 course. Instead, I'll just get like the main high level points because really it boils down to in each lesson, he's got 67 lessons. It comes down to like one thing or like maybe one or two ideas. Uh, and this is where we come to, I guess, the good thing and the bad thing of the course. Now, what do I like about Ty Lopez? He encourages reading. I'm never going to hate on a guy that encourages reading, baby. It's the best mechanism to self-improvement. It's what I tell you guys to keep doing. I probably don't say it enough. If you have a library card, you don't need any of these idiots, right? What I'm trying to tell you, you can get way deeper ideas. You can improve the quality of your thinking, the clarity of your thinking, all for an incredibly low price. So I, I like that about him. Hopefully he encourages people to read. Even his book list, I have no problem with. I thought his book list is pretty good. I've read a lot of the books on there um, and I would wholeheartedly endorse a lot of them. Now, what do I not like? Well, this whole course, 
and this would be sort of, this is getting into like the really rating part of it. The whole course is reheated self-help. Ty Lopez speed read the Barnes and Noble self-help section and put it into 50 hours of content, okay? 50 hours of him just telling little stories about uh, Grandpa Joel Salatin or whatever, which by the way, is this man a farmer or isn't he? I recently saw a video where he's approaching a horse from behind. How did I not know this? I felt this. Oh, oh. <laughs> but we're supposed to believe he's a farmer because he's got a hat on. Like I'm not even a farmer and even I know that. Look, can I be a farmer too now that I, I, I put a straw hat on? This is ridiculous. But anyways, that's the biggest problem is that if you've read self-help, if you've cracked open three, four, five, books from the self-help section, you already know all this stuff and you have it from the source material uh, where people have spent years crafting together like the amalgamation of decades of experience, right? Into one or two really crystallized ideas. Or you can have a guy who read it for 15 minutes at the breakfast table regurgitate it to you over an hour. I mean, I think the difference is clear and this is like, where the value proposition becomes uh, kind of weak is that really he's just regurgitating ideas all the while saying that you should read. But if you read, then the value of Ty Lopez's course basically goes to zero. Uh, and if you just listen to summaries, then you're kind of doing what Ty Lopez is saying not to do, which is to be a dilettante. Another incredibly ironic part of this course is he talks a lot about how you need to drink deeply from the well of knowledge. But Ty Lopez seems very interested in not drinking deeply from the well of knowledge instead of drinking very widely from the well of knowledge. Uh, I don't know. Don't become a dilettante. And now the next thing I want to talk about is listening to dilettantes. See, dilettantes are usually the loudest. Oh, by the way, if you guys don't know, dilettante is a fancy way of saying amateur. Someone who's just read very, just skimmed the surface. Um, and Ty Lopez's literal approach to reading is speed skimming. So <laughs> his message is don't listen to dilettantes, don't be a dilettante, uh, which I agree a lot with, but the problem is is that Ty Lopez is a dilettante telling you not to listen to dilettantes. Once again, I don't know how you get away from the irony here. I would also say here as an aside on the reading proposition is that this idea, he calls it strip mining, like you're mining for gold. You only want the gold, only look for the gold in the book. And as soon as you get it, you like put the book down. You don't care about that book anymore. I think it applies to like a certain class of business book, but honestly, most self-help isn't about getting as many ideas into your head as possible, which I think is what he does. He like conflates just reading a lot of ideas with being really smart. But in actuality, it's internalizing those ideas and applying them, them to your life that is the only thing that matters. Which is why a lot of people can watch hundreds of high-class performers share their biggest ideas and they never become a high-class performer themselves. Is because you can take in ideas without actually getting out of it what they're actually saying. You're not actually internalizing the ideas and I think strip mining is the absolute way to make this mistake. Is by not really spending time in the idea like literally just like Oh my gosh, what's this? This is what his idea of speed skimming is. It's like, oh, look through the book. Oh, got that book. It's gone. That's the idea. It's a little dumb. I think there's a time for reading broadly, but eventually if if what he, I'm getting actually what he's saying, like you should actually read deeply, then that's not how you do it. So felt a little confused there. Now, if you find any of this ironic, uh, you're not the only one. And I think the best way I can explain it is that you could actually learn a lot from Ty Lopez, I'm not joking, by watching what he does, not what he tells you to do. So I think if you watch his his uh, original ad, you know, here in my garage, you could learn an amazing amount about sales and marketing from that, right? From that. If you actually read like Ty Lopez reads, because even though he obviously skims a lot of books, he is well read, I think you'd be fine. I think you'd do well. I think the problem is, is that what Ty Lopez does and what he says to do are two different things, which leads to a very interesting thing when you're watching him tell you his life advice. Cause you're kind of like, oh wait, didn't you do that to us? Oh wait, did aren't you using these tricks on us? Like take for example, his part where he's saying, don't be the sucker in the room while talking to a bunch of people who bought some reheated set of ideas that were from a bunch of people that they should have just read instead of watched Ty Lopez's course. What beyond you just consciously going, I'm not gonna be the sucker in the room, right? you make that conscious decision. It doesn't mean you won't be the sucker. Like, <laughs> I can't explain to you 
how funny this is to me that he's saying this, but okay, let's keep going. Conscious changes are, well, like Freud said, the mind is like uh, a iceberg. 90% of it is below the water in your subconscious. So the Lollapalooza effect. Now I talk. He's really jumping around here. What he's quoting now is a Charlie Munger thing. Lollapalooza effect. Basically, it's the idea that cognitive biases stack on top of each other uh, to produce a much greater result. Small biases can stack on top of each other. And he's going to basically say, don't do it. Don't avoid Lollapalooza effect moments. Okay. Talk about this a lot in the ultimate closing system, sales, green belt stuff. And you might not be in that. If you're in an entrepreneur, oh, another upsell. you definitely should check that out because it's the best thing. You always lose at an auction. Think of what happens to you. You walk into an auction, there's a person on stage. Stat is the authority bias. So automatically, even subconsciously, they are perceived by your subconscious as an authority because they're literally physically above you. Then they're doing things like going once, going twice. They're creating scarcity and urgency. Like, ooh, if I don't buy this right now, I'm gonna lose it. Even though it's something you've lived your whole life perfectly well with, uh, you know, perfectly well before you even heard of it. Still an influence on you. All these things added together create what Charlie Munger has coined the Lollapalooza effect. And the Lollapalooza effect is a force too powerful a coalescing of multiple biases all at once. And that is why they say they don't even put themselves in that situation. It's not something you can build up willpower around. Okay, so all of that to say, he's saying, look, don't get around things that prey on multiple of your cognitive biases because you don't have enough willpower to withstand it. It's just, you're gonna lose every time. This is what a webinar is, guys. This is what Ty Lopez's ads do, is their Lollapalooza wonderland. It's scarcity. It's appeal to social proof. It's like, show, look at all the testimonials. It's all of these, oh, it's pre-recorded live webinar, guys. This is all for you. I did this just for you. They're professional marketers. That's what they do. And so Ty Lopez, in a class that you got sold to with the Lollapalooza effect, is saying, don't fall for this effect. So again, we're left thinking, okay, Ty, what is this? It's like a course for suckers, how not to get suckered. And the first lesson is, well, you've already been suckered, so you're a sucker. It's like bizarre to watch this and watch him say like, oh yeah, you should try to avoid these situations if possible. Ty Lopez's webinars and all these marketers' webinars are the thing that he's talking about. And not only that, he's also simultaneously saying that you're the sucker in the room. So yeah, this, that's how I felt this whole entire course, rich with like sort of irony, and though he had some good ideas that like I agree with and I've internalized myself, they're all from books, right? They're all from books that most people, if you just go through the basic reading list of a self-help section, you're gonna learn, or the basics of a business book section, you're gonna learn. And this guy is basically projecting himself to be the authority on all these topics, despite reading just very broadly on all of them. And then he says, don't listen to dilettantes. So I don't know, take from that what you will. All in all, rating. Let's get to a rating. I think you guys get the picture. <laughs> uh, I would go ahead and give this, out of five stars, a 1.5. I would say, you know, the marketing was overhyped. If you thought this was going to lead to a good life really quick, obviously it does not. So it doesn't fulfill its side of the marketing. It's just a bunch of like common sense frameworks that most people would know. I think the person who should buy this though, I'm, I'm going to give you someone who should buy this. If you like Ty Lopez uh, and you realize the marketing's misleading and you've never read the self-help section before and you want a broad swath of it regurgitated through some long-winded rants, right? Uh, maybe you have a lot of listening you need to be doing and you can't stand the voice of anyone but Ty Lopez. This might be a good course for you, you know? If you want to avoid the source material and just listen to Ty Lopez, this may be a good course for you. But for the rest, rest of you, yeah, I would say... Save your money, get a library card, and be well. I think that's gonna about do it. Thanks for coming to this episode of Webinar Wednesday. Tell me if you liked it. Tell me if you hated it. Tell me if you wanna see more. Who do you wanna see next week on Webinar Wednesday where we get scammed so you don't have to? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, I'll see you tomorrow.